Okay, so greetings and salutations and welcome to a very special presentation on the eve of the full moon lunar eclipse in fixed earth sign Taurus, which I truly believe signals the end of polarity in the human condition. We have been through so many challenging cycles and we all pretty much understand what it means to live in limbo, what I call the holding pattern of life. And that's really all that really needs to be said other than expressing yourself in the most authentic and transparent manner, regardless of what people's belief structures or archetypes hold in the way that they ascertain and acknowledge who you are because that's got nothing to do with the bigger picture for so many millennia now we have been stuck in the vortex that is polarity polarity ultimately operates in any universe, quantum universe, physical universe, spiritual universe, as a means by which to create and generate balance in everyone's life. Balance coupled with courage and a deeper, more liberated outlook, if you like, really sets the tone for where we are right now as we begin through this first lunar eclipse in Taurus, as we are in the guts of Scorpio season, ground these new frequencies that are really shifting, changing and altering our light bodies and therefore recalibrating who we are as individuals within a larger collective consciousness. Relationship is everything. Without light, there could be no shadow. Without space, there could be no form. From our senses to our mind to nature itself, everything functions through relationship based polarity everything is dualistic everything has poles everything has its pair of opposites like and unlike are the same opposites are identical in nature but different in degree extremes meet all truths are but only half truths all paradoxes may be somewhat reconciled. Now, Pluto and this Plutonic energy of us all commanding our dark night of the soul, our journey into the underworld on a fairly regular basis, each new seven day cycle rules viruses and pathogens. So if we are stagnant and not completing the initiatory cycle of Pluto, that is death, rebirth and transformation, the body goes into overwhelm and it can make us ill. Our emotional body becomes so overwrought by all of these escalations in the serotonin, in the dopamine, and the melatonin that's missing, that we become completely unhinged. And for many, truly mentally unbalanced. Fearing death causes energy blocks to the circulation we can hold with cosmic and earth energies at what is known as a zero point. To be in a neutral position and to be cleaning and cleansing one's auric field in any given moment 
sending in your psychic technicians, if you like, to find that little pocket of negative energy where your thoughts have ultimately navigated to is a means by which to truly understand the depth of our healing power. When we lose sight of our higher guidance and intuition and follow orders when it comes to health, it feeds parasitic forces because we're not pushing the release valve or finding our truth and our healing power. If we hold on to programmings or belief systems or even archetypes that are not in alignment with our higher self, we begin to get assimilated into artificial timelines because we have lost connection with the all important truth frequency. Anything in our being that is not our truth, which is our connection to higher mind and intuition, it's like sewage and affects our blood, our health, our circuitry system, our endocrine, our cardiovascular system. And we get this, what is known as an overgrowth of these parasites then feeding the archon energy. Physical symptoms are nothing to fear. It is there to help us to grow and transform, not mask, drug or hand over to another. We're not here to hand ourselves willingly by offering consent to parasitic forces. But if we do, and we have, as we know, we can always correct it and call it back and alchemize and transmute what no longer serves, thank it for its humble service and its powerful lesson, and send it back to source. Because this is all about dissolving the polarity and in the process, rediscovering our sourceal self. There is nothing we can't heal or correct or override in this cycle of our existence, which is why, for those who know me well, understand that I live by a simple code that everything is medicine. Everything is medicine if we allow it or perceive it to be and not through the antiquated mutant lens of poison poisoning our system by eating the processed food, by drinking the tainted water, by willingly accepting these promissory contracts that provide us with these sustaining elements, if you like. Now, the cleansing power of ether will help us to move energy and not just move it and release it, but brings in this substance that can begin to dissolve the fences and seals in our DNA. And when that happens, we start to step into our avatar consciousness. This is pure love. The love 2.0 that I speak about when not immediately gravitating to clinging to or attaching to the old paradigm of love, which most people throw willingly over their shoulder without a care in the world for what it really means. Now, Venus transits have been creating the cor corrections to reconnect with ether, the zero point source energy in highly profound ways. And Venus is in her darker shadow period as she prepares to go into a prolonged 2.5 month retrograde. And we know that when Venus goes into retrograde, we lose touch with our emotions. We feel completely out of kilter because someone's pulled the rug from underneath us. 
But that allows us to redefine our emotional state of being, redefine our emotional state, period. If we can tune our emotions to the higher frequency, that higher octave that allows us to transmit, transmit our most sentient expression to the universe, then we truly hold mastery over the conscious development of ourselves. The divine power that the archons can't handle and it's their kryptonite is when we are in a constant state of reflection, review and self-correction. So we are entering the season of Ephesus, which is ruled by ether. It's the 13th sign of the Zodiac, the divine mother quintessence. Not a lot of people are aware of Ephesus's actual existence because we've only ever been programmed and conditioned to believe that there are only 12 signs in the Zodiac. But there actually is a 13th sign. And now as we transition out of the old mutant paradigm of duality and the polarity it holds in place, we transcend into a much higher density of consciousness. And this is where this 13th zodiac sign rules and holds space for everyone in the universe. It's time to fully align and drop the distortions and the lower energies of negative ego. Because then when polarity is removed from the quantum equation of life, you can really address the depth at which you're expressing and allowing yourself to express the negative ego. It's time to ignite and awaken what has been unconscious and bring healing and the deeper love and compassionate strength into everything. Let it move through you and emerge from you as a radiating beacon of pure light language. When we allow the rigors of life to move through it rather than get stuck bumping into all of its bombardments, all of its distractions, all of its attachments, we gain a deeper resonant flow with the natural rhythm, the biosphere rhythm of the universe itself. So wherever possible, ask yourself, am I being reactionary to something because I have an attachment to it? And rather than get stuck, move through it seamlessly and lovingly with compassionate strength in your heart. It will serve you so well because you're about to get a lot of really well needed support from the universe. Now, most of you who understand the very basics of what is known as a natal chart in astrology know what planets were above you when you were born, what the sky's configuration was like when you were born. And what we are dealing with now is what is known as the major shift in the nodal axis. That's what this lunar eclipse in Taurus, fixed Earth, ruled by Venus, exalted by the moon, is to understand the shift of this nodal axis. 
So over the course of 2021, the South Node has been in the transitory sign of Sagittarius, which signals our connection to the past. Because we're always emanating, radiating and reflecting fragmented aspects of our past because we're trying to find fragmented parts of ourselves that have been somewhat lost in the ether. While the North Node of the Moon has been in Gemini over the course of the last year. And that is all about polarity. We need one thing in order to balance another. Do we really? Or is that just part of the programming that our ancestral lineage, our parental upbringing, our clinging and connection to archetypes like religions, and devotional practices has embedded within our consciousness to believe is true and accurate when truly it's a false flag. It's one of the first things you realize when you start to wake up, wake up from the amnesia, wake up from the full slumber of being stuck in the limited perception drawn around the duality principle. So the North Node has been in Gemini and now it's moving out of there and it's moving to fixed Earth Taurus. So everything that's been in a state of polarity, kind of you floating in and around, kind of trying to make sense of who you are and sense of the world and why is this kind of unfolding why are these manifestations unfolding in the way that they do? It's because that polarity expressed in the North Node has been in Gemini. The reflection of the shadow and the true self. We all have our twin. We all have our darker shadow aspects. What I like to refer to as the doppelganger, the tulpa the dweller on the threshold, the darker shadow version of ourselves, hidden in another dimension, ruled by a different set of dimensional laws. But nonetheless, a very integral part, although somewhat fragmented, of self, self-awareness, self-love, self-expression, the liberated self. So this is allowing us to see that by grounding all of what's shifting within us, within the light body, within the depth of our sovereign integral, is now going to become more grounded, more fixed, because it's connected to the earth. And the great takeaway from this discussion, this insight, if you like, is not only is everything medicine, but let's look for everything through the lens of grounded medicine. What do we know to really, really be true? Where does the love frequency meet with the truth frequency? And how does that embody the elixir, God's divine plan, in the way that we can then embody and express that in our everyday lives. Well, we need to literally go back, back through the space-time continuum to when planet Gaia, planet Earth, and her own consciousness was at a totally different level. She has escalated and accelerated in her own conscious evolution and taken us with her for the ride. But we need to understand the depth of the knowing of the knowing, which is what I'm expressing here, the deeper inner knowing, because it comes from an attachment 
for lack of a better word, to our ancestral past. Earlier precursors of ourselves that are now no longer operating within this three-dimensional plane of existence, but rather in a completely different density of consciousness, which is once again governed and ruled by different dimensional laws. And they need to be observed and respected accordingly. What I'm talking about, I want to know is the Star Elders. Now, there was a previous ascension portal we're going to use common language because cognitive dissonance in language is where a lot of information falls short of the mark. So let's just keep it in the everyday speak as much as possible. So the previous Ascension portal on the 14th of April in the year 2014 was a mere warm up to set the stage for what is about to manifest. We have all grown so much. Talking now directly to each one of you, you have made your choices and are now unshakable in your truth. You've become resilient. You've put on your energy warrior armor and being able to navigate reasonably well a fairly clear transient human experience without falling into the darker depths of the transhuman agenda which is what this whole pandemic, COVID-19, back smash, whatever you want to call it, has been all about. And there's enough said about that on every platform imaginable that I certainly don't need to add any rhetoric to it. You no longer feel the need to defend yourself. You are prepared in profound ways that will shift the course of your own life. What manifests now is directly related to what you believe and what you are directly consciously prepared for. If you prepared for struggle and survival as energy will follow intention, you will experience this in spades, particularly with these eclipses, these lunar eclipses and solar eclipses, this summer solstice, winter solstice, the rising of the morning star, the shift of the nodal axis into the greater galactic center, and the story continues to churn and burn without any end in sight. But if you were prepared for an uplifted new life, new world, higher frequency of human expression, then you will experience this. This is your creation. And what you feed is what will grow in your human experience. There is so much rarefied etheric support flowing from the higher divine realms to lift you out of all the defending noise, because that's all it is, it's just noise. Third party drama with third party interactions create in the Vedic what is known as Maya. In the English and everyday speak, drama. So you're lifting yourself out of the defending noise of the old mutant paradigm in the crumbling world and up into the realm of new higher frequencies and corresponding experiences. The higher realms have manifested a new foundation in this emerging future world. Many of your higher selves in tandem with the company of heaven, the ascended masters, the Elohim, 
your spirit guides, spirit animals, the powerful wisdom of the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, the microbial kingdom, and the legions of light have built this foundation for you. That's why we've been through such difficult, rigorous and challenging times. The new world is your creation. Everything beyond this time will be original and indigenous to this new cycle, this new state of rebirth. Pluto is the rebirth and death, and we have had so much interaction with both Pluto and Saturn and, to a lesser degree, Neptune. These all hold very strong polarities within the human psyche, within the psychological understanding of the world and the way it unfolds to us. This new world has more freedom and less limitations, boundaries and borders. But it also comes with many more responsibilities. To enter this time, we must let go of all that is dissolving around you, including the remaining toxicity associated with the 3D matrix. It's absolutely no wonder that at the end of this lunar eclipse cycle, solar eclipse cycle and the solstice, that we will have the release, the meta release of the Farrelly brothers and the installment of Matrix 4. And I can already tell you Matrix 4 holds deeper, more profound, hidden secrets within hidden dimensions that you ever thought possible. And I, for one, am absolutely excited to the max about what's coming. So you've got to let go of all that is dissolving around you, because if you allow it to dissolve and dissipate and just flow back into the ether, it will. And it's not a time to fight or judge what still is. We're done with fight or flight. We're done with guilt or shame. These are the broken records that exist within the everyday language that we just got to let go. We just got to leave behind because it serves no purpose. It holds no weight in human consciousness. It is time to step into clean and clear new frequencies and allow all that is new to embody within and rise up with a divine core focus and centeredness and a deeper profound congruency. That's what the message of the Star Elders have been quietly and carefully transmitting to many of us in the dreaming. I, for one, believe that the dreaming is where I live a real life. And in my waking world, I operate from a much more distorted more dualistic perspective. So let's talk dates. Many esoterics, evolutionary astrologers, alchemists, of which I consider myself to be one, have received unlimited downloads giving us a profound roadmap to what lies ahead once we dissolve and let go of fear.
So the big dates to pay attention to as 2021 comes to a final close and we all breathe a sigh of relief knowing that we've managed to survive it. That's the last time we need to survive anything. Get ready for 2022. 2022 is the master builder. It is the master builder number, the two and the two and the two, the three twos is six. For those of the darker forces, the eighth sphere, the Luciferian energy, the divergent timeline, it represents the 666, the number of the beast. But it also represents the powerful high frequency of Venus. And she will come out of her really deep retrograde around the end of January and early February. So on the 19th of November, which is coming up in a few short minutes from now here in the Southern Hemisphere, which is why I chose to wait until it was literally that time to celebrate the arrival of this lunar eclipse in fixed Earth Taurus will be the lunar eclipse. On the 4th of December will be the solar eclipse. On the 21st of December will be the summer solstice or winter solstice, depending on the hemisphere. And that will predominantly operate through to the 18th of January in the year 2022, which will be known as a 20 core day ascension portal. Now, we'll stick with that, but I refer to as a gateless gate. A gateless gate is where there are no limitations that are bounded by limited thinking, limited perception. The 20 day portal is signaling all manner of probability and all manner of possibility that will rise up to the highest octaves of human transmission. That is our expression through the avatar that is our personality. And many of us already embody reflective personalities of the planets themselves. Every planet in our illusory solar system has a personality. And there are traits that go with that personality that ultimately help us to become form. Form is collapsible into either solid or liquid, into a particle, or into a wave if you understand quantum physics or quantum science. All that we embody during this 20 day core portal, ascension portal, is the center of a cartoon cycle and are both flipping points from one reality to another. It's where we will physically feel the actual missing of polarity. It won't be there. It won't actually be operating in a manner to hold us back. The Katun and the Baktuns are ultimately measured cycles by the Maya who I have a great affinity for because in many previous incarnations, I was part of the Maya civilization, both at a, a priest level or priestess level and also as subjugated, a slave level, because that's what dualism, living a dualistic set of lives, best reflects. 
So this is our first major turning point based in cycles of time. This is our first cosmic flip between letting go of the outdated past and stepping into our new future. Since we entered this new cycle on the 21st of December in the year 2012, that many heralded as a doomsday, an end of days, an Armageddon of sorts, we arrive in the knowing that this is a new frequency and it's just now only beginning to rise up in the physical world. We are entering a fresh new frequency of love, unity, and deeper harmony that is a co-creation that we're all invited to participate in. It's an energy that can set us free and can help us soar. It is important to keep our eyes and our hearts open and not let mind language within the mind, monkey mind, run away with us. Even now, this is way more than we actually think it is or beyond what we have imagined. But clues are on the way if we keep paying attention. All these events are lining up as part of God's divine plan at once to assist a complete cosmic flip and the arrival of higher new frequencies that we have yet to experience in this lifetime, what I call the turn of the spiral. And it's all new to us. This is why it is important to stay in our heart center and to trust in that core central sun that is our heart energy. Now, we don't know exactly how it will play out, nor do we know what the future looks like. But the star elders say that it will surprise us. We have become masters of living in the great unknown. Fear and everything this encompasses that is anything less than love is going into the, the rear view. Throw it over your shoulder. We can now hold our centers and keep our hearts open even while all outer foundations seem to be crumbling around us. And we see it every day if we're open to receive the transmissions that are coming into our subconscious and then reflected in the way that our intentions draw energy to manifest it. We will travel through this lunar solar eclipse portal and travel through the center of the first 20 year cartoon cycle on December 21st. which I expect will be exceptionally powerful for many. Then we are ready to enter the 20 core day ascension portal. And the star elders showed me a vision about how many cycles upon cycles upon cycles of empowered intent will be set into motion by collective humanity within these 20 days. This is a serious opportunity to step up to the plate and be counted in our sovereign power. This 20 day core ascension cycle will seat and anchor all of this into the reality of the new 26,000 year cycle. Each epoch, and we've been in a 26,000 year cycle of Pisces, and we have finished that it was a dark age of Pisces. It was a, a, a very transformative period 
of human evolution. So many things came and went. We saw, we conquered, we put notches on our belt. We allowed things to run away with ourselves. We created so many fragmented splits within social hierarchies. The patriarchy had a, its day in the sun, if you like, and continued for a really long time. We lost touch with the divine feminine. And the list goes on and on and on. But at the end of the day, they're just cycles. Now, when a cycle round begins again, as it does, just like now, there is a period of time where the new cycle is seated and anchored. This is what we are doing today. We are seating a massive new cycle of time that is 26,000 years long. It takes a lot of long and arduous earth years to anchor this major cycle that defines the very essence of who we are as a species. We are coming to the center of this first cartoon cycle. And we will flip the timeline as we already have from the past to the future because the polarity very much speaks about the journey out of the past and into the future. It is a huge opportunity to let go of the past that is no longer working for us. And it's time to open up our hearts and fully surrender ourselves to the higher frequencies that are rising up, upgrading our junk DNA as we speak. What science has referred to as junk DNA, it didn't correlate with the 12 strands that make up human consciousness. We're realizing that a lot of that DNA was just not activated. We weren't ready. We weren't mature and liberated enough in our sense of who we are to really unlock the magic that is very carefully protected and hidden in the junk DNA. Now, and remember that any time we reach these new frequencies that we, we elevate to these higher octaves of human expression, it comes with that element of surprise or feeling like you never saw it coming because it's not meant to. If we're in the flow of ease and grace, then things just happen because we are being in our beingness. I refer to it as the BM the beam. We are only light and vibration. But on earth, we embody a physical body. And we have ignored the many, many signs that our body is not operating at an optimum level. Our biofield isn't tuned to the higher vibration of the planet itself. Now, when we know that it's coming, we're already filled with intrepidation. We're already filled with expectations. We're already developing agendas within and looking to take responsibilities or at least assign those responsibilities to manifest those agendas. But if we just allow us to be in the river of ease and grace, then it takes breaking away from our patterns, our familiarity of things to enter new unexperienced motions, motions, emotions. These are represented in what are known as light frequencies. This takes, as our ancestral heritage has proven, 
time and time again, epoch into epoch, that it takes a warrior, a master, a brave soul, all of which you are to transcend these limitations and boundaries of the past and embrace our collective future, which is all about our deeper and our closer connection to God. Now, in Mayan cosmology, future cycles will bring more changes and opportunities to uplift the human experience. They will arrive within 13 years on the 21st of December in the year 2025. 20 years in the year 2032, 52 years in the year 2064, 65 years in the year 2077, 260 years in the year 2022-72. It's all based on the paradigm shift that we experienced on December the 21st, 2012. These are the flipping points in the center of each of these new cycles where the past is left behind and we enter a deeper, clearer level in the new 26,000 year cycle that is heralded by our immersion into the age of Aquarius. And we've been feeling so much Aquarian energy. Saturn has been wielding his powerful magic in the sign of Aquarius. Aquarius is no mess, no fuss. Let's get it done. Whether you're a water sign, a fire sign, earth or air, when these planetary energies are in the very transient, transitory sign of Aquarius, we are in fluid motion. We are in flux. We are seeing things through a very, very different. We drop the compromise. We are multidimensional beings. No longer driven, bordered or bounded by compromise. Every moment is magical. Every moment brings new possibilities. I'm amazed at the amount of synergy that's taken place while people have been so wrapped up in fear during this pandemic, during this mandatory forced vaccination scenario. If you don't want the vax, you don't have to take it. Oh, but we're told that if we don't, we're going to lose all our freedoms. We're going to lose our, our ability to really, really enjoy the bounty and beauty of life. Rubbish. That's perception. Not one single thing since the onset of this shifting cycle, this very dark plutonic energy, which, as I said at the beginning, represents viruses and pathogens, has one thing changed in my world, not one. Other than not being on the same page as other people, third party interactions, and rather than try to fix it, force it through the eye of the needle, I just let it go. And the takeaway from this discussion is simple. If it doesn't look divine, if it doesn't sound divine, if it doesn't feel divine, if it doesn't taste divine, doesn't smell divine, then it's not divine. And so you thank the lesson that you're learning from the experience, from the interaction that creates and embodies the experience. You thank it for its humble service and you send it back to source. Our true higher self power lies in maintaining and sustaining our sovereignty 
and our deeper connection to nature. And a little hidden gem of wisdom for all who have eyes to see and ears to hear. A lot of what is embodied, the crystalline channel of our spacesuit, of our flesh vehicle, of our human physical experience is collapsing into plasma. Because I finally came to the conclusion that the human chakra system, whether it be the crown, the third eye, the throat, heart, solar plexus, root, sacral, and so on, they are simply vortex centers of conscious plasma energy. And plasma from the sun embodies the building blocks, the molecular building blocks, the quarks of quantum science into life. So we're in a deep state of rebuild and it is so blissful if you allow it to be. So that's what I would like to be able to share openly with all of you that what's been has been and what's been done has been done. And the only thing left standing is what is, is. The isness. And I'm going to finish by offering what I call a Mayan cosmology prayer, which is a prayer to my higher self. If you embody it, it's a prayer to your higher self. So I am my I am presence and I am one in the totia, the one that is all in the we are. As one unified heart flame, we now invoke the 12 solar aspects of deity to project their luminous presence into the atmosphere of earth. Divine one in all, we ask you to integrate and accelerate these 12 solar aspects of deity, anchor their divine light into every person, six density crystalline, solar spine and plasma energy centers. Raise our vibration to the new solar sun frequencies for greater alignment to the hive mind experience and the unified resonant field of consciousness around the planet. This higher frequency of illuminated conscious light is now embodied in every person's six density crystalline solar spine and all 12 solar sun plasma vortexes. May we continue to be the keepers of the new doorways outside the matrix. May this higher frequency of illuminated crystalline solar light shine and illuminate the inner light of all. We gently return these 12 solar aspects of deity to the circle of the sacred 12, embodying the purity, the truth, and the core essence of our light body experience on the planet. And we go in peace. We love ourselves. We integrate all within and we share our unique love with the world. Harmony is the key. Everything is medicine. Polarity is a thing of the past. And the future for all looks incredibly bright. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy this powerful lunar eclipse, grounding 
your true higher self to Gaia herself. She's embracing you. She will hold you deep within her embrace and enjoy all of what the universe, the cosmology and your human experience brings to play in every waking moment of your life. Thanks for listening.